What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you like this video. This is your review for Power <clears throat> Book 2, Ghost, Season 4, I mean 3, Episode 7. So we start this episode, the child, the Russians are out for blood, okay? We knew that they were not going to just stop um, at the whole fume situation, but they are out. They're hitting the corner boys, and the war is on. Monet is confronting Guardo, telling Guardo, listen, um, you um, need to stay away from Drew. And Guardo was like, I'm not. And she was like, what are you talking about? Like, it's not a good time. You got the Russians, you got this. Guardo was like, listen, you know and I know that the reason why you don't want me around Drew is because you don't want Drew to find out, that, you know, what you did with your daddy. Um, and she was like, yeah, but you know it's not a good idea for either one of us, you know, for him to find out for either one of us. He was like, listen, I ain't going to say nothing. You not going to say nothing. And I'm going to keep seeing Drew. That's just what it is. So, of course, Monet don't like that. And he might, he walked away laughing like he got the upper hand. But I was like, yeah. Y'all be playing with Monet like Monet don't know how to get 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 back, okay? So then we see Tariq talking to Lauren. Now I still don't know how Lauren has a phone with service that don't nobody know about. I don't know how she she snuck out and she went she went down to the campus. She went past the bodega and got a burner phone. She ended up at her parents' house. I don't understand. Lauren is just running roughshod. I don't know. But anyway, they end up having a conversation. And Tariq is doing his Tariq thing where he's convincing her that she don't see what's in front of her eyes and that everything she's being told is a lie, you know. And he knows that she's talking to somebody because she knew he she knew information about his sister and all that good stuff. And he says, listen, before you go and testify, let me prove to you that I'm not lying. Like, let me prove to you that I didn't have anything to do with what happened to you and that I never tried to have you, you know, unalived. And she was like, all right, I'm going to give you a chance to, you know, prove yourself. Now, while this is going on, <clears throat> we got Brayden and Kiki down to the bedroom doing whatever they was doing in the bedroom. And she, he's still upset that him and Tariq ain't made up yet, right? And so Kiki's doing what, you know, what they do. And she was just like, well, I mean, basically she let him know that she knows that he's running a whole drug empire uh, out of the um, out of the company, and he told you know, of course, Braden being Braden, he ends up confessing to it, and he was like, okay, fine, okay, fine, and he was like, well, Tariq came up with the coffee part, but I, you know, I was the one that decided to go through crypto, and so she was like, well, it seems to me like that was the important part, like anybody can come up with a way to sell the drugs, but you came up with a way to legitimize the money, that's the important part. And she was like, listen, don't worry, you're so, you know, your secret is safe with me. I just think, you know, it was very ingenious how you set the whole thing up. And I was like, see, I don't trust Kiki. I told y'all from the beginning, Kiki was a little too quick to be pushing up on Brayden. And I was right. We'll get to that later. Monet had called an emergency meeting, and they had to loop her in on everything that was going on with Noma. She was like, yo, this Noma chick, she crazy as hell. Why y'all ain't tell me? All of this was going on, and they were look, giving her to look like, but you said you didn't want to be part of the business no more. You, That's what you had told us, that you didn't want no bot to this, you know. So, they sitting there trying to figure out what they're going to do about the Russians, what they're going to do about the product. They can't sell nothing on the street because the Russians is hitting their corner boys. Um, and so, they got to increase <clears throat> pushing out the product at the colleges and through the, and through the, um, the, 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 um, the, the Braden's company, Braden's family's company, until they can figure out what to do about the Russians. Now, Tariq is over there on his phone, totally unbothered. And Monet is like, yo, what's up with him? And <laughs> he go, Kane. Oh, he mad because we killed his little girlfriend. <laughs> he said, no, he said his wire-wearing girlfriend. So Monet was like, everybody get out. I need to talk to him. Now, let me say this. That Fendi suit that Monet had on in this scene, I loved it. I was here for it. It was cute. It was cute, Mo. It was cute. Anyway, um, it seemed like every season they like they switch up because like two seasons ago it was Louis Vuitton. Everything was Louis Vuitton. Louis, Louis, Louis. Now this season it seemed like everything is Fendi, Fendi, Fendi. I don't know. Then again, Tariq did have that badass Fendi coat season one. Maybe it's just certain designers that they deal with. But neither here nor there. See, I done got, I done went left. That's how my reviews be 30 minutes long. Anyway, let me come back to focus. So... 
Monet was like, listen, what, what, what they talking about? He was like, they said it. They killed my, my girl, and they went behind my back and did it. And she was like, okay, but, I mean, was she wearing a wire? He was like, yeah, but I had it handled. Like, the case was over. Like, it was done. She was like, well, it seems to me like they did what they were supposed to do. I'm going to need you to chop, chop, get your head out the clouds. Come back down. You my, you're my brain of this operation. I need you. Well, how are we going to do this? And so he was like, well, you know, you know, the Russians, they got to re-up and blah, 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 da, 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 da. I'll be honest with you. When he explained it, it ain't made sense to me until I saw it. So let me tell you what he did. What he ended up doing was he ended up going to Tate and telling Tate, listen, I'm going to give you this information on a big uh, shipment of drugs that's coming in the docks with the Russians. You know, here's what you could do. You can take credit for busting the Russians, and then basically it takes care of one of my enemies. They on my they on my back, and I need them off the street. So of course Tate was like, "Well, how do I know you're not gonna burn me like you did the last time?" And you know he was like, "Listen, I need this. Like these these people are really on my ass, so I'm not burning you, okay, bro? Like I got you." So Tate takes the bait, and he you know he does it. They have the big bust. They end up taking the Russians down, but we'll. We ain't finished with the Russians, but that that put a big dent in it, and they were able to get back on get their product back on the street because the Russians didn't have nothing. They were dried up because that whole shipment, that whole warehouse went down, okay? Now, while this is going on, we have a totally useless storyline, which I still, they still going to have to show me what the purpose of this storyline is. But we have Davis and Sachs down to the um, prison. They were able to get his brother another, um, they were able to get his brother another, um, hearing parole hearing they weren't able to get him clemency but they were able to get him a parole hearing and sax was like they you know they were practicing with the brother and of course the brother was saying the dumb answers and he told sack he told davis listen i'm at peace like i'm good with dying here like i'm i know i'm not gonna get parole i'd have been before the parole board 20 times they never give me parole i'm not getting my hopes up live your life like i'm here it is what it is live your life well sax comes up with this bright idea to bribe one of the um Parole board members. He goes to Jenny and tells Jenny, listen, I need you to put somebody on the, this dude on the parole board who we know takes bribes. There's so many things wrong with this whole situation. First of all, if everybody know this dude takes bribes and he's on the parole board, why are they going after him? Why are they no Rico on this dude? Why are y'all just letting him run around taking bribes and putting people, letting people stay in jail or letting people out of jail based on who can afford to pay? Like, if everybody know he doing it, hello? Then Jenny... Miss Lawn Order was like, I don't know. You sure about this? I'm waiting for her to go off and be like, Sax, you gotta be kidding me. I cannot do that. My ethics won't allow it. Like, I'm waiting for a whole response. And she was just like, okay, I mean, are you sure? Now, I don't know if ultimately her mindset is we're gonna set Davis up because we got him, you know, soliciting bribes or whatever. Well, not soliciting, but giving out bribes and we're gonna set him up and this is gonna be part of the case to help bring him down or what? But to me, she went along with this plan a little too easy as far as I was concerned. So then, um, so then, um, they bribed the dude. He asked, he asked Davis for the money. Davis goes in his safe and was like, here, here's plenty of money. Now, to Davis' credit, he was a little, like, iffy about it. Like, I don't know, like, you're talking about bribing, like, a whole government employee. Like, there's a whole nother level to that that i don't know if that's where i'm trying to go but he does he's like well it's for my brother do what you gotta do to get my brother out so sex ends up bribing the dude the brother ends up getting out right so you know of course davis is happy he got the beers and all that brother mad as hell brother is like listen i told you i was good i told you i had made peace with my situation he was like, I went to jail because you were the one that was going to do something and you were the one that was going to make something of yourself. You did something to get me out. I didn't get out on no legitimate shit. So you out here putting yourself in danger. Put, he said, it doesn't do any good if you end up in jail even after all of this. That means my whole life was a waste. So he told Davis, listen, go ahead and take me to this treatment facility that's going to give me this miracle cure and save my life. But don't visit me. Don't call. Don't text. And I'm like... So we've been dealing with this storyline for two seasons for what? It ain't even Redman no more. Even Redman knew this storyline was stupid. He said, I'm not doing this shit. So anyway, moving on. Now down to the cafe, we got the Castillo brothers mad 
because they are in a war with the Russians that they did not bargain for. And they are trying to renegotiate their contract with the Tejadas. They were like, listen, we're taking a whole lot of the heat. We need to renegotiate this whole situation. And um, Gordo ends up standing up for Drew, right? Gordo ends up standing up for Drew. And they like, well, we're going to take a vote. They said they want 50-50 of the business. And he was like, well, we're going to take a vote um, after, after uh, Drew leaves. So we find out that Gordo ends up talking his family into, you know, sticking to the original deal. And he was like, you love me? You really would do that for me? And I was like, boy, bye. I loaned each other. Child, whatever. Anyway, I'm not going down that road, child. So then we got Monet playing footsies with old boy. The dude, the uh, the connect that um wouldn't help them out at the beginning of the season. I don't know the man's name, child. Um... And, of course, Drew is not feeling it. He walks in on them, you know, flirting or whatever. Monet know what it is. Monet know the game. She know that old boy been clocking for her for a long time. And at the end of the day, she know they need to connect, right? Um, and so she tells Drew, listen, I need you to chill out. Like, we're trying to do business. Like, we're trying to save this this business. And, we, you know, like, yeah, I know. I ain't stupid. I know what he's doing. You know what I mean? But I need you to chill out. Like, you up here playing, you know, all defense. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to handle myself. Anyway, so then we down to um, Stansfield, and I'm going to go ahead and knock this out too because, again, I don't care no more. So they having, I guess, like a little open mic night kind of thing. We got light skin Keisha rapping, doing what we know she know how to do. Then Salim gets up there and does his little spoken word apology poem to Diana, talking about he spoke out of turn and he apologized and he didn't mean it and he got this whole rose for her. And, baby, Diana, to Diana's credit, Diana was like, I ain't feeling this. I ain't feeling this, right? So she leaves him standing there looking stupid in front of everybody. So they end up talking in the back. And she tells him, listen, it is a wrap. I am done. Like, you don't, you can't just say what you said to me and disrespect me and dis disrespect my dad on the day of his funeral. And then think you could come in here and just apologize and it'd be all good. So he, you know, so he went from being apologetic to being an ass, right? So he was like, oh, so is it true that you out here, you know, uh, Tariq? And she was like, who I, it's not your business or your concern. Um, don't you worry about all that. Just know that me and you, we ain't cool, okay? I'll find a way to pay you back for them books you loan me, and that is it, and that is all. So... He tells her, basically, clean up your shit, you fire, you know, find another way to pay your tuition. So later on, we see Diana talking to Monet, and Monet was like, you know, because she like, why you avoiding my calls? Why you ain't been by the house? And she was like, mom, school is just harder than I thought, and I'm dealing with this dude. Here go, Monet. Ain't nobody messing with my baby. You need me to come up there and talk to him? Monet, don't nobody. Monet, you cannot handle everything with brute force, Monet. She said, no, Ma, I got it. I'm, you know, I'm your daughter. You told me everything. I can handle it. So, to her credit, she did her homework. She Googled him, honey. I guess he had left, a, maybe she got his real name or something in one of the books that he loaned her or he had left something in the book or whatever. But either, neither here nor there, she was able to find out his true identity, baby. Come to find out, he is from Silver Spring, Maryland. Now, Silver Spring, Maryland, because that's my area. It's a, you know, it's a decent area. You know, you got people living. It's just like any other community. You got the, the high, 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 the low, low, low. So he lived in Silver Spring, Maryland. Come to find out that Salim, whatever, whatever, ain't his real name. His real name is like Travis Jackson or some shit. Uh, he went to prep school. He is not this like hotep. He is not from a single family, a single parent family. He did not struggle. He was adopted by a rich white couple. He took equestrian lessons. And she was like, listen, <coughs> both of us have secrets. And unless you want me to expose your secrets, you're going to keep quiet. And you're going to give me my job back. And you're going to give me a raise. Because at first he was like, who cares? Who cares? She was like, oh, you care. You don't want you don't want to be exposed that you're not this whole tap come from a single parent home person that you out here trying to perpetrate that you are. Now the reality is he could have showed up as he really was and still had the views he has. Um, but you know everybody want to be the, part of the struggle. Okay, everybody want to be part of the struggle. So then we see Tariq visit um, Effie, and Effie was like, "What you want?" And he was like, "I need that picture of Noma's daughter because uh, I'm trying to you know make some things happen." And she was like. 
I'll give you the picture if you let me back in the business. And he was like, hell no. Nah. He was like, I can't trust you. She was like, you can't trust me? What you mean you can't trust me? And he was like, I can't trust you. So, um, he was like, you went behind my back. And, you know, I told you I was trying to get Lauren out of the country. I mean, out of town. And you went behind my back and you killed her anyway. And she was like, you just weak. You know, they, you're weak. I did what you didn't have the balls to do. Um, you just so weak or whatever, you know. Your little, she was like, I'm glad I took care of your little girlfriend. Now, what Effie didn't know was that Tariq was actually recording her and recording that conversation of her admitting that she was the one that acted alone and that Tariq didn't know nothing about it. Later on in the episode, I'm going to go ahead and knock this out, child. Later on in the episode, Tariq just snuck into the office where Lauren was getting ready, the, the, the DEA office, where, he, child, it was a mess. He didn't bribe somebody for their jacket, hat, and badge to get into the building. He didn't snuck into the bathroom. He just happened to know which bathroom Lauren was going to be in that big ass building. He just happened to know what floor and what bathroom Lauren was going to go into. But he was able to convince Lauren. She listened to the tape and she was like, I believe you. So he was able to convince Lauren that he didn't know nothing about it and that he didn't wasn't he wasn't a part of, of them trying to kill her, you know. So she said, well, you know, they got a whole Rico charge on you. He was like, Rico? What the hell? And she was like, yeah, like, y'all in trouble. They done linked you and the Tejadas together. I'm skipping ahead. I'll explain how they linked the Tejadas together in a minute. But they did. And um, she said, I'll try my best to hold off as long as I can. But, bro, you in trouble. So, of course, Tariq, you know, he was like, fuck, you know. While this is going on, down to the to the Westing, Westing uh, house, Braden is there late one night. And he have he's there, um, the people, the, 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 the system is flooded because they got too many drug orders. So he's on the phone with the people trying to get the server fixed so they can get their, their coffee back online and, you know, make sure the business is running the way it's supposed to run. He sees a dude sneaking out of the, the closet with bags of shredded paper. He ends up sneaking in the closet, going up and found up. He found a secret staircase that was a room full of documents and fake books. He just stole the books and he is like, you know, studying these books. And he realizes that they're actually, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to, listen, I'm going to go finish these storylines, okay? He realizes that there is a whole Ponzi scheme going on um, in, the high, in, in the building, right? So he goes to Kiki about it. Why he goes to Kiki, I don't know. Probably because him and Tariq ain't cool right now. So he goes to Kiki about it. And Kiki is like, um, no, I don't think that's what's happening here. Just don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. And he was like, what are you talking about? Like, this is a whole Ponzi scheme. Like, I I can read numbers. I do understand this is two separate set of books. Like, it's crazy. He goes to his uncle um, to confront his uncle about it. And the uncle was like, yeah. At first, he tried to deny it. But then he was like, yeah. Yeah, that's what we're doing. He was like, well, does my father know? He was like, no, your father doesn't know anything. Your father's too uptight. He don't know nothing. So then he was like, um, this is crazy. You, you know, like, like this is what people go to jail for. Like, you, you know, and he said, well, have you told anybody else about it? And he was like, no, he was like, you're a bad liar. Kiki coming there, come to find out Kiki been in on it and she's helping the uncle run the damn Ponzi scheme. And of course they tell Brayden. And if you think about going to the authorities and trying to, you know, you know, be a, be an upstanding citizen about the situation. Um, Yeah. Um, we know that you're running a whole drug empire out of the company. And he was like, Kiki, you told him? She was like, bruh, we've been on to y'all from the beginning. Like, to be honest, we ain't even mad about it. Um, and it's a, you know, great way to clean this money. And Braden was like, well, look, uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna need this. I'm gonna need, this, I'm, gonna need this, I'm gonna need that money back <laughs> that I gave y'all. Uh, and I need to reach trust for it. And the uncle was like, yeah, that's not how this works. And I thought about that. I said, damn, Tariq's trust fund is fucked up. I mean, as long as the Ponzi scheme is running, Tariq is good. And once he gets of age, he can, like, slowly pull his money out. But, baby, for the next however many years that he got to do all of this, baby, his trust fund is in danger. I said, ooh, that is real. That's real fucked up. Now, while this is going on, Effie got some product from Kane, and she went up on the rooftop to store it. Only to find out she saw the damn camera. Now, Diana didn't see the camera. But, of course, by the time she saw the camera, the camera saw her. So, they got a picture of Effie up on the roof. They got a picture of Diana up on the roof, child. So, now, 
they're in the room, uh, Blanca, uh, Jenny, and the third dude, they're in the room trying to put it all together. Long story short, they were able to figure it out. They were like, listen, they were trying to figure out, they, they knew that the Russian drugs weren't the same as the drugs they found on the roof because they don't, they got Diana, they got the pictures, they know she had the pic. They they got her, but the drugs don't match. Well, they figured out, they sat there, you know, they put their brains together and they figured out that they got to still be running drugs somehow. How are they running the drugs? They're running the drugs through the stock, the stock brokerage firm. How are they doing it? We don't know. So they got old, they sent old dude down there to go through the garbage to see what he could find. And of course he finds a coffee cup and he's able to connect. They're able to connect the remnants of the drugs in the coffee cup. You know, that he found the false bottom and connected to the drugs they found on the rooftop, connecting the Tejadas to Tariq, to Diana, to Effie. It's so facto a Rico charge because of course, they already suspected Effie of killing Lauren, which, of course, we know Lauren ain't really did. So that's how they set up the Lauren is getting ready to testify situation, okay? Kane and Effie, I guess they're going to be the next thing, child, because Kane was telling Effie, you know, Effie, um, that they're going to have to lay low for a while. And she was like, what you talking about? Like, I got to I gotta pay my, um, my, my tuition. Like, tuition don't pay itself. And he was like, well, how much is it? I got you. And she was like, I don't need your charity. Fuck you, blah, 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 blah. Child, he went down there and paid it anyway. And she cussed him out, but she still smiled about it. I said, okay, here we go. Of course, we have to have our obligatory classroom um, classroom conversation. And we're talking about, you know, um, exchanging labor for reward. And, of course, everybody had their conversation. We got Diana sending subliminals to Salim. We have Effie sending subliminals to Tariq. And we got light-skinned Keisha calling Salim out. And then, of course, he had to talk about his single mama again, which we know we find out later on. He lying about child. He lied about it. Um, I'm going to skip so far ahead. All right, y'all. So then we got Monet going down to meet up with old dude, you know, to connect. Um, the dude she was flirting with. And she... She tells Drew to stay outside because she was like, Drew, you ain't got the heart for this because, you know, I got to be in here and I got to push up on this dude and you ain't ready to see all of that. She tells Kane, listen, just follow my lead. I need you to stick to the plan. And Kane was like, see, that's what I'm talking about. You always, <clears throat> you always trying to be in charge or trying to run something, but I'm in charge. And he was, she was like, look, I'll let you be in charge later. I need you to follow my lead tonight. Okay, you right. I need to start treating you like a man. But for right now, I need you to follow my lead. I need you to do what I need you to do. So Monet goes in there. She has the one-on-one -on -one conversation with old boy. She's saying all the right stuff. You know, I need you to run the business. And I'm going to give you, you know, I need to go into partnership with you. And I'm going to give you what you always wanted. Basically, me. Um, Lorenzo pushed me out the business. You know, blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden, there's gunshots outside, which, of course, puts dude on alert. Monet has to try to pull out her knife to get him. Um, and he gets the, he gets, you know, he, he. It's, it's a struggle, child. But ultimately, Monet kill him, you know. Drew and Kane come running in there. And she plants a phone on old boy with a text message that says, um, um, they suspect, I think they suspect that, Loren that the Russians didn't kill Lorenzo, what we gonna do. And when Drew comes in, of course, Drew is the one that ends up seeing the text message from this, you know, weird number. Um, and then it says, uh, the person responds and says, when do you want to meet? Right? So, of course, Drew is like, what? The Russians weren't even the ones that killed that killed Poppy. It was him. And uh, Monet was like, well, he was working with somebody. We need to figure out who he was working with and we need to get him. Right? So they end up taking old boy's head to the Russians and was like, listen, both of us were set up. They, we were told that y'all were the ones that killed Lorenzo, so we retaliated. But he was really our enemy. He double, he double crossed you. He double crossed us. Can we have a truce? Like, we eliminated him. We're bringing you his head. Is it a truce? And the Russian dude was like, yeah. But he said it reluctantly. So I don't know how much of a truce this really is going to be, but we'll see. Um... Then we have Drew and Gordo in bed being all lovey-dovey, you know, cuddled up and stuff. And come to find out, um, 
you know, he that's when he told uh, Drew that he convinced his brothers to stick with the original plan because, you know, he really, he that's how much he loves him and this is going to be real. And they all like, you know, giggling and everything is everything. So he ends up having to go. He gets in and he goes, he was like, oh, I got to get ready to get out of here. So he gets in the shower and um, while he's in the shower, mysteriously, um, Drew tried to text. He sends a text to that phone. What text did he send? Something about I'm on my way or something like that, right? And the text, the phone goes off because it's the burner phone that Guado and Monet have been using to set up Lorenzo's murder. So, of course, now Drew is like, wait a minute. He's the other person in this situation that set up to kill my dad. So he ends up killing him, child. He ends up killing Gordo. Of course, Kane comes in there. Kane is like, I got it, I got it. They call Monet. Monet comes in and comforts him. He all crying and upset. And of course, it was all a setup. It was all a setup to get rid of Gordo because Monet told you stay away from her son and you played with her. You played in her face. And you thought you got the best of Monet, but I keep telling y'all, Monet gonna get you in the end. She might not get you in the front, but she gonna get you in the back. And anyway, Gordo is bye-bye. I guess they're going to blame it on the Russians, child. I don't know. But Gordo is bye-bye. Poor Drew. He just can't keep a man. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, last but not least, the family is having dinner. They sitting at the table. You know, everybody's happy again. We got Monet, Drew, uh, Diana, and Kane. And they're having a good time. And who comes running up in the house? The DEA agents. They come in there with a warrant. And, of course, Everybody assumes it's them because all of them are damn criminals. But who do they pick up? The weakest link of them all, Diana. Why? Because, you know, they got the picture of Diana on the roof with the drugs. So that's how the episode ends with Monet saying, don't you say nothing. I'll be down there. So I'm sure Davis is going to show up or Sax. Anyway, that was the episode. Let me know what you guys think. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.